Okay, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and I just took a video down of a modification to a button compass. And I had it up, and there was a mistake that I had made in the logic of the video, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And I was going to just shoot another video as an update to kind of fix the problems from suggestions from viewers and comments that viewers had made. And I thought, you know what, that's going to be a big hassle, people watching two videos, and I'm going to have to answer comments two different places. And people are still going to be commenting on this one that something's not right and then not watch the next one. And I thought, you know, I'll just pull it down and shoot the whole thing over again. But what I want you to realize is, and we'll talk about this, that, you know, when you're thinking things through, sometimes you think you got it licked and there's one simple thing that you didn't think about that can screw up the whole system. And nobody's perfect, especially me, by a long shot. And I learn every day. And that's what I love about the community, bushcraft, YouTube, woodcraft, whatever you want to call it. That's what I love about this whole thing is learning from others and other people looking from the outside and saying, hey, you forgot this. And that's exactly what happened in this case. So first, let's kind of start over with this in case this is the first time you've watched this video. We'll talk about what we did here and then we'll talk about the modifications that were suggestions from viewers that make this system a lot better. Stay with me. Okay, so... What we're going to talk about is a modification to a button compass to make it more accurate and to help it to help you alleviate lateral drift and navigate using a button compass which normally you really can't do we'll talk about that in a minute but let's first look at how we use a normal base plate compass with a movable bezel ring what we do with this is we sight our bearing and we obviously have a front of our compass so we have an easy orientation line here with the sighting device that we can look at something off in the distance that we want to walk to. And then we simply move this bezel ring until the needle's in a doghouse. Just so happens this compass is facing almost dead north right now. But we move this bezel ring until this red thing that looks like a doghouse is right over where our needle's sitting. And that's called needle in the doghouse. And then what we would do if we were leapfrogging and that's the purpose for this compass is to keep us from experiencing lateral drift. If we sight an object off in the distance that we may lose sight of, we take that bearing. And because we're going to lose sight of that object, unless we walk with our compass open and watch every little movement of this thing, we're not going to know if we're veering left or veering right and the needle's leaving the doghouse. So what you do in that case is you leapfrog. And what you do is you pick an object that's somewhere in that same line of travel between you and an object you want to travel to that you will not lose sight of. Then you close the compass, you walk to that object. You go up to that object and you reorientate the compass so that the needle's in a doghouse with it straight in front of you because that's how you took your original bearing. And once you do that, you find another object between you and that object, close the compass and you walk to that. And that's called leapfrogging. And it's easy to orientate this because you've got this straight front line here and you've got this square box of a compass. So the orient reorientation of this thing to get the needle back to the doghouse and make sure you're in the same line of travel is very easy. That was the mistake that I made and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now let's talk about the button compass. So we have a normal marbles silver dollar button compass here. And really all this thing does is tell us general direction, north, south, east, and west. The needle's always going to point to magnetic north. Now, what I did in the original video was I took this plastic piece of PVC and I put two marks in it to act as a bezel ring so that I could move it around the housing to keep the needle in the doghouse. And so, from my original video, if I'm holding this compass out and I'm looking at an object off in the distance and I orientate this so that the needle's in the doghouse, I can walk to that object. What I didn't take into account was reorientating this compass at the next object to get another object in that same line if I lost sight of my original sighting. And what you need for that is some type of a line or mark on the outer housing of this compass because that allows you to use that as your aim point. So every time you're going to put that straight in front of you and that's going to be your direction of travel line and then all you have to do is make sure that the needle's in the doghouse and you're going in the same direction. So all you have to do is kind of move this like this and look at something in that same line and then walk again. And that line really allows you just to reorientate this compass so that you know where the front 
of this compass is because it's not a square box like this one you really have no way to determine what the front is on this thing without some kind of an orientating line to say this is the front of my compass the bezel ring moves so that you can lock that needle into the doghouse between those two crosshairs right there and walk the straight line and if it moves out of that doghouse obviously or out of those two marks you're not walking a straight line anymore so you really need both you need an orientation line on the housing to reorient this compass because it's round every time and then you need this movable bezel ring to be able to lock the needle into the dog or the north needle into the doghouse that combination gives you a navigable compass you're not going to be able to plug exact degree readings in with it like you could a base plate compass that has degree readings on the bezel ring it's not going to be that accurate this was a simple mod to make a button compass which is very cheap work as a temporary or short-term navigation device should something happen to this compass where you didn't have your normal compass with you this allows a button compass to be more functional than just hey there's north south east and west what i had forgotten was this orientation line that i just filed into the housing now one of these suggestions and again now that you see that maybe you understand just filing hash marks in this housing and moving this housing around as an orientation ring first of all when you do that that's taking the compass apart because that's what holds the lens and things on the compass you don't want to unscrew that you want a tight seal there so you don't want to move that thing around and once you loosen it up it's really sloppy and it's going to move on you you need something on there that's tight that catches on these knurls on the outside of this thing and you can almost hear it click when you're moving it so it's not going to move in your pocket that's what you want so between what I figured out and what the viewers told me I forgot, now we have a button compass that's a very good navigational tool. It's going to have some variation in it, but it's going to be way better than just a normal button compass would be. Okay, guys, so I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I thank the guys who kind of pointed the error of my way when I came up with this device for making a bezel ring on a button compass because I forgot one critical input in the formula to be able to make it repeatable. And I'm all about reducing variation and making things repeatable. And I forgot a critical input in the process to add to that repeatability. So I appreciate you guys telling me about that or pointing it out to me. And I hope I explained this fairly well in this video so that people understand it because I think there was a lot of people completely confused but maybe that confusion came from me because I didn't have that orientation or travel mark on the compass to begin with. Either way this is what YouTube's all about this is what community is all about is learning together and even guys who come up with stuff or try to improve things or know a lot or have a lot of knowledge don't always think of everything and this is case in point so I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.